The 16-year-old has been missing since this October. This little town, nobody goes missing. We may never see As Carly there are again. still no answers to Carly Gousset's location. And her She's disappearance probably has dead. Do you think she ran away or something? No. What happened to you, honey? Where are you? On an ordinary Friday night one October, a teenager went to her high school's football game with her boyfriend. She returned home later that night and spent time with her family before going to bed. But less than 12 hours later, she would be gone, seemingly vanished into thin air. What happened back in October 2018 that would leave her friends, family, and the local community left with so many heartbreaking, unanswered questions? Carly Lane Gousset was a sweet, funny, and introverted 16-year-old girl. She had a happy, ordinary childhood and upbringing. Her parents, Zach and Lindsay, had one four-year-old son when they welcomed Carly into the family. The four of them lived together in Bishop, California for a few years before Zach and Lindsay eventually divorced a couple years after Carly was born. Although Carly and her older brother lived with Lindsay full-time, Zach stayed close in nearby Chalfont Valley so he could still see his kids regularly. When Lindsay relocated to Nevada during Carly's teen years, instead of moving to Wellington with her, Carly decided to move in with Zach and her stepmom Melissa so she could stay at the same school and not be separated from her friends. While her new home life with her dad, Melissa, and her two half-brothers was happy overall, Carly started testing boundaries and started to party with her new boyfriend. Carly eventually became a regular marijuana user and smoked whenever she could, even going as far as getting caught smoking on campus during school hours. She was moved over to a separate building on campus that offered a program specifically for troubled students, typically those who were caught using drugs or fighting on school grounds. Because of her recent trouble and declining grades, Zach and Melissa decided to ground Carly and restrict her from her normal socializing. After getting special permission from Melissa to go out to Bishop's football game, Carly instead met up with a few friends at their house with her boyfriend, Donald. The small group sat around the house smoking for a couple hours before getting a ride back to Donald's house. Carly called Melissa for a ride home, which is when she confessed to not going to the football game after all. She said she was going to the football game, but I didn't hear drums in the background from the band or people cheering. So I knew she wasn't where she said she was. The two got back to their house and talked, spent time with Zach and Carly's brothers, then eventually had a girls' night in Carly's room. They stayed up talking, writing, and doodling before eventually dozing off in the early morning hours. When Melissa started to stir and rolled over in bed, she noticed Carly wasn't in bed with her anymore. She got up to check the house and backyard to see if Carly was just having an early start to her day, but when she couldn't find her after several minutes, she woke up Zach to see if he had any idea where she was. The two got into their separate cars to search the small neighborhood for her. After looking for a couple hours, they both returned home and realized how serious the situation had become. Melissa, how old is your daughter? Fifteen. What's her name? Carly. How long is she fifteen? I last saw her at five thirty this morning. As Melissa called the local police to report Carly missing, Zach made the difficult phone call to Lindsay, who was over 160 miles away at the time. I received a phone call at 9.35 a.m. from Zach, and uh, his response was, Lindsay, Carly's gone. Officers from the local Mono County Sheriff's Station showed up to the home in Chalfont Valley to try to track down Carly. After turning up empty-handed, Inyo County Search and Rescue was called in, along with the Forest Service and China Lake Naval Station to perform a broader search to find Carly as quickly as possible. Black Hawk just arrived and is sweeping over the desert. We're gonna find her. While cadaver dogs did pick up on a scent that led them into the nearby desert, the scent disappeared under sagebrush with no other sign or evidence that could be tied to Carly. 
Day quickly turned into night, and still no one had found any sign of her. Desperate for even more help, Melissa turned to her social media to spread the news about her stepdaughter's disappearance, hoping if more people knew of the situation, the family would have more help in keeping an eye out for her and bringing her home. Several heart-wrenching days passed, with each search attempt coming up with no leads or clues in what could have happened to Carly. Despite desperate pleas to local news outlets, social media posts, and extensive searches from professional officers and private investigators, Carly Gousset's whereabouts still remain unknown. How could an ordinary night out turn into such a tragic, unanswered loss? Many detectives, both professional in nature and armchair amateurs, have dissected the hours leading up to Carly's disappearance. Carly was grounded at the time she went missing. Before going out the night of October 12th, she lied to her family and asked for permission to attend her school's football game, when in reality, she knew she would be sneaking away to smoke marijuana with friends. After recently being in trouble for drug use, could she have had a nervous breakdown after lying to her parents? A temporary form of psychosis can be brought on by marijuana use in some users. It's most common in those who are frequent users, like Carly was, and who may have an underlying, undiagnosed mental illness. Days leading up to her disappearance, some friends described Carly as acting a bit paranoid, confiding she was afraid there were people who were out to get her, although she never went into much detail about her fears. The night before she went missing, her friends later said Carly became erratic while smoking that night. Her boyfriend, Donald, explained the music seemed to set her off, causing her to become hysterical and afraid of everyone in the room. When they unsuccessfully tried to calm her down, they got a ride back to Donald's house to have a more quiet environment and to try to ease her nerves. Donald revealed once they began walking back to his house, Carly became even more paranoid and was afraid of even him. She eventually pushed him away and screamed at him to leave her alone, which is when she called Melissa to ask for help. She was frantic and wanted to be picked up right away. After Melissa was able to get Carly home, Zach saw her for the first time that night and knew something was extremely wrong. She was paranoid. Uh, she was like scared, scared of, felt scared of us. But then she would almost turn, she would turn to, I love you. It would be like, you're scaring me. And then all of a sudden it'd be, I love you guys. Melissa attempted to make Carly a light dinner before getting into bed to rest and sleep off what was presumed to be her high. Carly continued to exhibit some strange and out-of-character reactions to her family and her surroundings. You're gonna kill me. Don't kill me. Why would I kill you? I don't know why. I'm just... Because I'm thinking all these demonic stuff and I can't help it. When Carly first went missing, Melissa initially reported she successfully got Carly into bed and to sleep before she went to her own bedroom with Zach to sleep for the night. She woke up the next morning to wake all of the kids up for school, but when she went back to check on their progress and getting ready, she saw Carly was gone. Taking into consideration the date of Carly's disappearance, her story raised a lot of suspicion for many people. The date of her disappearance has never been changed, so why would Melissa be waking her kids up for school at 5.45 on a Saturday morning? You told NBC that the next morning at 5.45 a.m., you, you did your your usual routine of opening up the kids' doors, saying good morning, getting them ready for school. Was she, she was still in bed at that time. Did you go back and lay down? Yeah, that was a false story. It was a lie about checking in on Carly. Melissa then offered her second explanation of staying in bed with Carly throughout the night. She had stayed next to me in the bed all night. She didn't want me to leave her side, and she asked me to go to bed with her. After dozing off for a couple hours, Melissa opened her eyes to see Carly was missing from bed, which is when she jumped up to search for her. And after just the, her demeanor and the way she was acting, and then waking up and her not being there, it was just like instant panic. During an interview after her disappearance, Carly's mom, Lindsay, revealed Carly had recently asked about the effects of LSD and hard psychotics, leaving Lindsay wondering if Carly had taken stronger drugs the night before she disappeared. I believe my daughter had a freaking drug overdose. And I believe it. A very early morning, Melissa saw her 
with her eyes open, and I think that's when my daughter passed. Psychotics can have many adverse effects on an individual, including anxiety and panic, paranoia, delusions, fear of death, and even violent behaviors. Is it possible Carly was experiencing some of these very effects the night of October 12th? Between her recent fear of being watched by unknown strangers, attacking Donald when he tried to console her, and hiding from her own family out of fear for her safety while in the house, Carly's moods and movements very closely align with many of the side effects of psychotics. If Carly left her home in Chalfont Valley on her own accord, there is a possibility she was experiencing drug-induced paranoia. Could she have left home that morning, fleeing a dangerous situation she felt she had no way out of? Neighbors came forward during the search and testified they saw a young woman in the neighborhood that morning who may have matched Carly's description. She had long, kind of long brown hair, and she was waving a, a piece of paper. She was just waving it in the air and, and walked by. Another neighbor who was out in the very early morning claimed to have locked eyes with the young woman who sounded like the female the first neighbor described. And he saw her walking down towards the highway and she kept looking back at him while she was walking. Lastly, a third witness thinks they may have seen someone who could have been Carly walking along the interstate. If this young female was indeed Carly, could she have jumped into a car with a stranger while near the interstate? Could she have been forced into a vehicle against her will? Or was she meeting with someone she knew, getting a ride away from her idea of danger? Three years after her disappearance, a fourth witness contacted officials to tell them he was at the same party as Carly in Tonopah, Nevada. He described the vehicle Carly was in when she got to the party, which later helped officials locate the vehicle and gather evidence they feel did correlate with Carly. Despite ongoing search efforts and active social media posts, no official arrests have been made, nor have there been any known updates to the case. As days, months, and even heartbreaking years continue to tick by with no sign of Carly, her family and friends continue to hold on to a shred of hope that she will one day be found. Please share this video to help spread awareness of Carly's story. The unity of law enforcement and the community continue to be an important force in bringing her home.